Jodnakvi New Delhi, Don Slash Asian News Network, Congress politician and peace activist Mani Shankar Ayer is being branded by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling cabal as an anti-India conspirator working with Pakistan to depose the Bhartiya Janata Party government in Gujarat, and to install a Muslim chief minister there. It's a poor men's version of the democratic allegation against United States President Donald Trump whose presidency is supposed to have been won for him by Russia. Cock and Bull used to be two rival coach inns on the way from London to Manchester. Drunken exaggerations and distilled tosh were their contribution to many areas of pseudo-expertise, hence Cock and Bull stories, akin to what Mr. Modi's Hindutva practitioners seem to revel in. If they had been keen observers of events in the neighborhood, they would know better. It is the robust and resurgent Nepal they should fear, not an exhausted and internally hemorrhaging Pakistan. Let me explain why. There was a time when India's ascendant right-wing doctrine, a hodgepodge of Italian fascism mounted on garbled Hinduism, anchored its future in Nepal's regressive monarchy. Successive monarchs were graded as Sri Teen and Sri Panch, expressing the potency of divinity they claimed as the incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Over time, the rulers, prototypes for Hindutva visionaries in India, became better known for the loot and plunder of the impoverished people of their landlocked country. Now the Shahs and the Ranas are in the doghouse or in exile, even as some of their fellow claimants to divinity in India, the so-called God-men, are lodged in jail. It was a pleasure to see secular ballot boxes being emptied at the self-assured counting centers of the new nation where a popular communist alliance of former rivals is headed for a landmark election victory. Like their Indian counterparts, Nepali communists and Maoists are misnomers for idealist romantics who are predominantly Hindu social democrats but of a staunchly secular persuasion. That's how Nehruvian India used to be up to Indira Gandhi's first term. A paramount message is about how to stay independent when caught between two giant neighbors who happen to be rivals with nuclear capability. Nepal's results are presenting a huge contrast to the groaning and moaning that's been going on in India, where tired and abused people and their clueless leaders have been hoping, mostly without a strategy, to figure out how to evict fatalism from their midst. Religious fatalism that once dogged the erstwhile Hindu kingdom shores up an abysmally medieval ruling mindset in India. Of course, Indians will get their chance in 2019 regardless of the outcome of the Gujarat elections currently underway in the BJP-ruled state. Many among the worried Indians are focused on the questionable electronic voting machines, which are indeed a threat to representative democracy if reports of their hacking are true, which they probably are. The results from cash-strapped Nepal offer a lesson about the importance of the old workhorse, the transparent ballot papers, a fairer if not always a flawless route to test popular will. There are, however, other important messages from Nepal to Indians.